welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Welcome to episode 131 of the Industry Angel. In this episode, I share the audio recorded during the Newcastle Gateshead Startup Safari. I live streamed interviews with some of the speakers and I host a lightning pitch competition. There's some great points raised here and I wanted to share them with you, the Angel Army. Yeah, uh, I'm Sean Allen, um, pretty much an independent XR consultant, uh, X Factor 76. XR? Uh, XR, sorry. Uh, XR is pretty much a. Uh, abbreviated acronym for virtual reality VR, augmented reality AR, and mixed reality MR. Uh, so the coin was phrased, I believe, by uh, Tony Perezzi, one of the, the bosses at Unity, about two years ago, and he said, right. "Look, let's let's just call it XR." All yeah, right, okay. so bit of a catch-all. Yeah, definitely. So interesting presentation you just gave us there, mm-hmm. and I hope you don't mind us saying, but. We've got younger guys in the room who yep. have been presenting, and then I think your presentation there was a lot about going through the decades about your your particular yeah. journey. Interesting enough, you talked about highs and lows, mm. and one thing I took away from that was the rug can be pulled at any time. Just when you're starting to think everything's all right, Absolutely. there's a potential that stuff could happen and go yeah. wrong. Yeah, um, I wouldn't mind you drilling a little bit of that <clears> because I've just spoke with a couple of guys there. Mm. Um, Tom and Cameron, very enthusiastic lads, yes. loads of youthful endeavour and just <laughs> going for it and the playing yeah. at the moment. They're great. Uh, they are indeed. So, uh, from your experience, what what would you what would you impart on on some of the younger guys that we've got maybe listening to this? What kind yeah. of knowledge could you give them? I mean, it's it, it's more or less, uh, you know, my my main you know, bit of guidance is is what we were just saying there. It's like things can happen, things can kind of throw you, but more equally as important is literally to stay on on your mission stay on your target okay. um, don't let uh, you've got to work through those issues yeah um, and all that but don't don't let anything stop you okay uh, they're just yeah they're just things you need to work through they're not insurmountable nothing is what's your thoughts on investment then because I think it's it's pretty much in vogue now everyone's talking about taking investment <coughs> and, and, mm-hmm. and getting VCs and given equity for, for part of your company and stuff like that. Yeah. What's your experience on that? Have, have you always bootstrapped and, and looked to try to win work and then that, that would take you through? Yeah, uh, pretty much always. Okay. Mainly out of more necessity than anything else. Okay. I mean, obviously back in the uh, back in the decades I went through there, <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't have much chance of uh, investors in a, in a a small games company and stuff like that. Um, but I, I learned a lot, uh, to be honest, I which is an, a, another thing you're always learning you never stop learning yeah uh learned an awful lot last week uh it uh you know paul lancaster's uh newcastle startup events. start a week well if listeners are listening to this they might have listened to um two two or three podcasts we had out last week yeah cool so i grabbed about a dozen people from start a week last week which was really good so did you speak uh, sorry that a name escapes me but the 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 lady who came over from copenhagen and the copenhagen catalog that she was talking about I'm not sure. I did speak to Sophia. Yeah, uh, from the, from uh, the she museum. Was a friend of Sophia. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, so, yeah. I think her name might have been Maria, if I'm not okay. uh, mistaken. But she was talking about the fact, and, and uh, Dan Lyons touched on this thing in digital as well, that fundamentally the kind of Silicon Valley um, startup models, like it's almost dead. It's kind yeah? of it's run its course. Okay. Um, and we need, you know, we need something else. Okay. And part of what the, uh, if, if my understanding of it's correct, part of what uh, the girl from Copenhagen was talking about was uh, a kind of a, a different ideology to startups, not all being about, you know, the round A, B, C funding, yeah, yeah, yeah. scaling up as fast as you can. It's yeah. about taking your time, doing it right. Yes. Um, and, and also some, you know, some quite a lot of moral objectives in it as well. And I, I, honestly, have a look at uh, the Copenhagen catalogue. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting. What we heard from um, Tony Robinson, I don't know if you caught mm-hmm. Tony Robinson's um, talk at the start of the yeah. week. And he gave a number of, okay, five directives, I think, he was some, some sort of... Um, tips he was given and one of them was bootstrap don't don't borrow bootstrap mm-hmm. don't borrow and, yeah, yeah. and it really resonated with me because I think I think you're right I think that's where we're starting to get to now is the fact that people are, 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 are wanting to try to do that because yeah. 
you see people take an investment and then suddenly because they've got investment they then pay themselves a kind of, you know a decent yeah, yeah. salary it's, yeah, and you're burning through tempting. that money yeah yeah but if, you, if you're bootstrapping I guess you're looking for work you're looking to generate yeah. leads convert them into a sale mm. start bringing in the money to then pay rather than take yeah. the investment so to me it's uh you know, I'm not doing down all investment, not by mm-hmm. any uh, stretch of imagination. But to me, it, it it makes it all a lot a lot more real. You know, you're not on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're on this like hype wagon of of paying yourself a crazy big salary just because you can for yes. what, six months. Yes. And then what? Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. Uh, so doing it the way some of the more steady outfits, obviously in in my space, uh, you know, the, the the likes of what what Frankie's doing with Pocket Money Games and Perception, you know, really really steady growth. Yeah. Um, nothing too crazy. Doesn't take investment. Yeah. Could have it tomorrow. Could have it tomorrow from Oculus, but right. refuse it. You'd rather stay independent. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting enough, you talk about um, taking investment, but when you win work, how do you pitch for? How do you know how long it's going to take you to do something? So, for instance, you know, you, you get companies that say, "Okay, Sean, I want you to do X, Y, and Z." Mm-hmm. You might not have ever done that before. It might be really new technology yeah. to you. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, honestly, that's, that's a good <laughs> point. Um, when uh, I didn't go on to the, too many of the, the commercial, well, other than the uh, stuff to do with Great North and what have you, <clears throat> too many of the commercial uh, projects were Vector. Um, but I remember our very, very first one, which was for um, South Shields Community School. Okay. Places, yeah, uh, yeah. Which was a new school, a merger of two I know it uh, well. other ones. Yeah. Being a sand dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so when, uh, yeah, there was two, I can't remember the names now, uh, Mortimer and another one. And they were merging the two schools into one. King George, uh, was it King George? Yeah, yeah. could have been that. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, the school rang me on a on a Saturday morning to say, All right, okay. how, how, they'd seen a lot of, you know, the stuff in the press about the Second Life Island and that. Yeah. Uh, virtual Newcastle. And they said, oh, could you do this for our school? And I'm like, yeah, I could. Uh, wow. I've had several meetings. They went for it. And I was thinking, what on earth do <laughs> I charge for this? <laughs> yeah, of course. Literally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's, quite, it's okay to, to mention now it wasn't 2010. Um, I literally, having been involved in print uh, with a graphics firm in the 80s, yeah. Um, I had an idea of roughly what a, a glossy brochure would cost. Okay. And the effect of a glossy brochure compared to what we could deliver with, with uh, virtual worlds at the time. Okay. Uh, and an engagement with, with the pupils and, you know, stakeholders involved in the school. Yeah. I thought, right, glossy brochure times four. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> right about, okay. I don't know, 20K or something like that. Yeah, at the time. yeah. Um, but, I mean, now we, um, we're quite sort of... Um, you know, we, we, we've done this for quite some time now. Okay. And, yeah, we can we can look at a project and pretty accurately cost it out yeah. what it's going to involve. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> full-on, fully immersive, um, what we call built 3D, uh, built VR, which is in 3D and using Unity and all that stuff. Um, that's a different kind of pricing model to what would be charged for 360 video, let's say, which yeah. is a different capture uh, system. Uh, and then... In augmented reality, we've got to bear in mind effectively releasing an app for Android and iOS. Yeah, yeah. Again, it, it's a different format. Sure. Um, so, yeah, we, we can nail it yeah. pretty accurately. Do you work on fixed cost then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, if we, if, we, if we say a project will be X, it yeah. will be X. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. if we say it'll be de- delivered on on why it will yeah. be delivered do you know it is y. because that's you've got the experience. Do you know what I mean? You kind yeah. of buy that kind of stuff. It yeah. It just Thanks comes with time. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I think it's yeah. That's our other than some of the technical stuff that uh, the team next door are working on. That's very much our strengths. Yeah, yeah. we've been doing this a while. Yeah, you know. awesome. Well, there you go. That was cool. a, quite a good uh, place to leave it because in terms of time, you haven't got any because <laughs> you've got to be somewhere else. <laughs> haven't got long. So thanks <laughs> so much, awesome, man. Really thanks good. Ian. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Thank you. Ta. Stop Safari Day Three. Just had a presentation from yourself. Do you want to tell us who you are, where you're from, and just a bit? bit about that um, presentation because it was very much visual yes so the listeners at home need to understand okay okay yeah my name's adam pomeroy um from a company called the luminous group uh we are based over um in usburn in newcastle um we are a mixed reality partner with microsoft so we develop specifically for hololens um and we work closely with them on the new release of the hololens 2 and a couple of products that they have uh uh, launched along with the HoloLens, mm-hmm. uh, in particular Dynamics 365, um, Remote Assist, and um, Guides. Do you want to tell us what HoloLens is? Uh, 
Yeah, HoloLens is a uh, a mixture mixed reality device. Okay. So it merges the digital world with the real world. Um, using holographic information. Um, it interacts with the real world um, to produce um, whatever it is you need to produce, so 3D models. Okay. Um, it's highly visual uh, mm. piece of equipment, and you can use it for various different purposes, really. So you've just showed us there. I've just had a quick go of your yes. uh, device. What would you call it? HoloLens? HoloLens, HoloLens yeah. Device. HoloLens, yeah. Okay, and what you said was look down, like I could see an engine. Yep. And you showed us a video there of someone training to fit parts to an engine. Correct, That yes. sort of stuff, so. Yeah. Um, automotive maybe industry that kind of stuff it looked very much like it lend itself to correct very um, much so yeah interesting so a, a question that I kind of thought of in my mind is as an apprentice back in the day you'd probably be taught by somebody else who'd been doing it for decades and you learn that information that comes down through the generation yes I was saying now that HoloLens will kind of remove that and, and you can self talk, like teach yourself yourself you know self self learning yeah in some respects yes okay. um, the, the guide itself um, isn't that the purpose isn't necessary for that but it okay. is a training device yeah, yeah. Uh, the application of guides is is purposely for training yeah. but what it does does allow a company to do is to record uh, the knowledge that um, employees who may be re approaching retirement is um, and obviously passing on that knowledge mm. um, is is key to the running of a business um, so guides uh, allows um, employees to capture that uh, that knowledge before they retire and move on. Mm. Um, so it's it's uh, it can be used for that purpose, um, but it has it has multiple purposes right across a range of industries. Um, automotive being one of them, um, but anything that requires um, quite a visual hands-on learning experience. Yeah, guides um, does produce uh, a, a program that employees can use right across uh, across their training uh, it, with hands-on experience. It's interesting, I think, sometimes when you bring technology into a company, um, companies can be quite nervous of that. So yep. the stakeholders, the, the, the kind of um, the purchasing team, if you like, who bring that technology in, you've won them over, but then it gets into the masses, then it gets into the workforce. Yep. How receptive are they from something like this? Very much um, the reception is... is far greater than it will be to normal training, uh, okay. certainly from employees um, who, who want to learn, as I say, with, with the hands-on experience. Um, the reception is, is very, very good, actually. Um, mm -hmm. People love it. It's a fun device as well. Put it on, okay. something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you immerse yourself in what it is you're looking at, and right. you can really get a better view of, of how to do something yes. rather than it just being from a, a sort of plain yeah. kind of classroom environment. Classroom environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, sure. um, th this, this really does open the doors to to immersive learning and um, especially from a younger generation okay. their reception towards this and virtual reality augmented yes. reality it, it's within that realm yeah, um, yeah. so it, it, the reception of it is, is I guess it's that a level of expectation of technology as they come through as, they, as children get old and they leave school they just expect stuff like this absolutely yeah <laughs> to, to a large extent especially from larger companies okay. um, to adopt this kind of new technology yeah. augmented reality virtual reality is, sure. is, is fully available it's out there for being out there for a long time so, so in, terms, yeah. in terms of this device are we there yet is it very much in the zone where people are using it or is it like being is it more t a test and yeah. it's going to get better and better or, or is it actually in production now it's getting used it is getting used um on a small scale at the moment, okay. HoloLens 2 has, has recently come out, okay. um, but it's not fully available until later on in the year, yeah. which replaces the old HoloLens 1, which is what we've got here. Is it HoloLens by Microsoft then? Or it's is built by, manufactured by Microsoft, oh, okay. yes. Um, so HoloLens 2 has, has, has recently been announced, and as I say, should be fully available mm. uh, sometime this year. We don't know exactly you know, when. Um, but in terms of its, its use in HoloLens 1, that was more like a developer um, kit. Okay. So um, it was really quite experimental uh, for the mm. last three years. HoloLens 2 is now becoming some more of the mainstream, so we should see a lot more of it, I would imagine, in that sort of five to ten years in the use of the technology right across a range of industries. Excellent. I would imagine that HoloLens 2 will certainly take take it to the next level, really, yeah. and being implemented right across the various, the various sectors. 
So think about you and your business then. How do you get into this? Were you a Microsoft partner and you were implementing other systems and this popped up and you thought, I'm going for that. Right. I want to be the man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's quite an unusual story, really. We um, we started out doing 3D modeling and scanning. That's, that's predominantly what Luminous's history has been. Okay. And we uh, sort of came into virtual reality, really, because of the, the models that we were producing in 3D. Our customers and clients were asking us to, to see it in, in 3D. Yeah. Uh, and that laterally led us into to VR and the use of VR to, to view their factories, to view uh, what we've captured and the models that we developed for them. Um, so the demand was there for, for use and seeing it in a new light as such, which which kind of led us on into augmented reality and HoloLens. Um, okay. We could certainly see the benefits when this device came out around about sort of three years ago. Yeah. And we got involved with sort of developing for it, looking at how we can uh, use it and utilize it within the industry that we were working in. Um, that led us to produce and and develop some some pieces of software from quite large companies, PepsiCo being one of them, um, and um, we've developed a number of applications for Hololens, which has led us into some good conversations with Microsoft, which then led us to become a Microsoft uh, mixed reality partner. Uh, uh, that sounds cool. Uh, on last, it's a little bit of an elongated story, <laughs> but yeah, we got there in the end, yeah, and. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's not many um, approved Microsoft developers in the world at the moment. There's, okay. there's around, I think, around about 100, 150 or so. Okay. And uh, we're lucky enough to be to be approved and, and one of those developers. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of the Northeast, there's, there's not that many at all ah, uh, who work directly with Microsoft and HoloLens. Are you part of the proto community then? Are you based here? or? We're not. We're just placed over the river or um, at Usburn at the Toffee oh, yes. Factory. Uh-huh. Um, that's where all of our developers are based. And, uh, yeah, we work out there. We have good connections with Proto, though. Um, okay. We work, work closely with them, and we've been a number of times, and yeah. we're, we're always uh, in conversations with the guys at Proto. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. I think one of the common themes that we've heard about today is that it's a real community. Yeah. And the collaboration's fantastic, and the, and the sharing of knowledge and best practices is, is amazing. Especially, I think one of the guys was saying, you just go for a cup of coffee, you get into the kitchen, and you just start to talk yeah. and, and share experiences. So. Are you tapping into that community as well in that? Very much so, yeah. yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very much part of it. We, mm. Like I said, we regularly come over, um, share knowledge with them, uh, and they share it back with us, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have all the devices and all the equipment mm. uh, and everything there. It's quite an exciting place. It's uh, exciting to, times. To, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, really, really happy to be involved in it as well. You know, Luminous is, 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 uh, is part of it, so um, awesome. it's, it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, we we'll keep an eye on you then. Well, Hopefully, th- yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for your time. It's been good to meet you. You too. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank all you. right. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Yep, back with the Startup Safari, live on Facebook. Would you mind telling us who you are, where you're from? Uh, my name's John, uh, John Taylor, and I live in Newcastle. Uh, well, I live in Whitley Bay, um, where I was born here and then pretty much moved all over the world. And as, soon as, Newca- as soon as you said Newcastle, I got a shudder there. Right, okay. We've been red and white. Oh, I was at the stadium like yesterday, actually, oh, yeah? at the finance camp. All oh, right, okay, uh, how'd it go? Was, um, well, apart from being at the stadium late right, and nah, getting a rush, on. no, no, it's a good it. stadium. It is. It was this hospitality area, so it wasn't oh, too right, bad. Yeah, yeah hospitality's good. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Um, so yeah, spent the day there. So we've just heard from a panel of speakers. You were one of them. Yeah. My ears pricked up because we've heard from today from lots of people talking about. I've heard a term now, XR. Check me out. So VR, okay. AR, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Very much around the tech space. We went for a little visit around Proto. We seen all the the kind of white screen, green screen stuff, the cameras everywhere, you know, it was really yeah. tech. And then you go and throw a curveball out and say, I'm into mindfulness. Okay. So what, I grabbed you. Yeah. I want to hear more about that. So what, what's going on? Well, mindfulness is you can be mindful in any situation. Mm-hmm. So you can literally just be having the worst day ever and just okay. stop mm-hmm. and step out of the circle that you're in. Mm-hmm. So whatever chaos that might be happening, you might have had an argument with somebody at home or... You're driving to work or you're on the bus or somebody might knock into you and you're not really having a good day. You can actually just become mindful and step away from that situation quicker than you can actually physically be inside it. Mm -hmm. So mindfulness has been around for thousands of years. Um, It's probably getting used more now, but people probably don't really understand what it means. Okay. For me, it is about time and space. It's Mm -hmm. about just allowing yourself to be a little bit in the present become consciously and don't let the clutter of what's going on in your mind catch up with your day yeah so that is becoming mindful of being mindful okay I get basically. That. Um, and things that you can do is meditation okay you can um, change a little bit of your routine in that day and change is good people think it's a bad thing but it's happening all the time yeah um, so I, I think that by bringing my expertise into the company of uh, looking at from that point of view 
and Raphael being the IT computer genius in terms of the technology, he's a doctor in VR. Yeah. You can't get any more complimentary. <laughs> um, that's probably why what we do works, I think. Mm -hmm. So what's your role then? You've talked about Raphael, your business partner. He's yeah. more the tech side. What about yourself? Um, well, I'm doing sort of like the project management. I'm okay. writing investment proposals. I'm looking at content. I'm building relationships. So right. we're in partnerships with like CPI, Newcastle mm -hmm. University, mm -hmm. Innovation Super Network. We're actually part of the Age and Accelerator program, so working out the biosphere. All right, We've okay. got a desk at Proto, so putting ourselves right in where all the energy is happening. Yeah, and yeah. I sense that, you see. So okay. um, why not Why not better than put yourself there? So, so my, my role really is to look at how we learn, um, the psychology of a human being, mm -hmm. what works for somebody else might not work for another person. Okay. And taking all of that content and creating language around it and then converting that into di digital talk, really. So. Okay, so can you ask about the dementia as well? Because I thought that was quite... Yeah, yeah. no, I'm totally, I'm, I'm exactly going yeah. there because we've heard a couple of times today about um, how tech can be used for dementia. Yeah. And, and is that something you, you talk about the biosphere, which is a great place here in Newcastle, yeah. life sciences sort of mm -hmm. um, location. Yeah. Is that, some, is that a space that you're working in? Yes, yeah, so the Alzheimer's and dementia, because I'm ex-military and I suffered with PTSD when I was in oh, the army. Okay. And there's a, there's a lot of collabor no, a lot of symptoms linked to PTSD and traumatic events that happen in people's lives that they're now starting to find a relationship with people with dementia. Oh, really? In terms of the symptoms. So isolation, okay. loneliness, yeah. memory loss, hallucination. These are all common symptoms with PTSD. Yeah. So one of the questions I've proposed and asked is that if you've suffered with sort of a stress-related issue in life yeah. and you haven't dealt with that and buried it so deeply, has that led to the symptoms of dementia later on? And all right, okay. Nobody's really answered that. Right. So how can we use technology with VR and sound and we're introducing sensory base like smells? Yes. So smell when you smell something releases memory yes uh -huh, uh -huh. so when you recreate smell for somebody it's like do you take it back to childhood back. It? Yeah, yeah. and we can record what's happening in somebody's mind so we can look at experiences around that yeah, yeah. and dementia and alzheimer's is a is a growing problem and um, the government have identified that as a massive and they're releasing pots of money for innovative ideas to combat sort of them situations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very clinical as well dementia so we have to validate what we do with just stress and anxiety first which is just a, a common day problem mm. so yeah so in terms of your business your business or the business around you the community the collaborations we've, we've heard here in Proto yeah. we've got dementia how on earth can you solve it with tech then what sort of product is out there what what do you well, do? Well, VR for one has okay. already been used. So you're literally sitting with somebody who has symptoms of dementia or yeah. suffering at the moment. Yeah. Pop, pop them in the VR yeah. headset on, and then you're showing them things. What from the past to trigger oh, you, things? Or you can, you can. Um, what we're looking on doing is recreating memorable experiences for people. Okay. So okay. in demographic. Right. So there's um, there's a guy we spoke to from Department of International Trade. Right. And yeah, his yeah. father passed away about. I think it was about 40 years ago when he was 15. Okay. And he found a video of him. Ah. And when he watched the video, yes. his dad was wearing a hat okay. and he could smell his dad's hat 40 no years later. Wow, wow, wow. So can you imagine yeah, the, the yeah. kind of content that we can work on? Say if we went to like Biker or Wall's End and we looked at a demographic of people who were suffering or living with dementia. Yes. And um, they were say 65 to 70 and we could recreate a, a significant time of their lives when they were younger mm. and bring that to life okay Phew, you never know what's going to come up yeah so it's quite interesting that's what we're looking on doing that so kind of you, thing. you mentioned video there it was interesting so could you could you take something like a video and then replicate some of that video or use that video to yeah, create yeah you can a scenario? convert it into yeah. the virtual reality wow. but the, the thing is that the headsets at the moment which is good yeah uh, but they can become quite nauseous okay yeah. and for people wearing them don't like them and especially yeah. with the aging population yeah so there's things like sensory rooms that you can okay. actually physically go in and relive experiences that just way. immerse so, yourself in there yeah wow fantastic. so we're looking at a little bit beyond and creating a product which i can't say too much about now but that's like, fine john no yeah, yeah, i'm not yeah. signing ndas because no, you're, no, you're, no, you're gonna yeah. you're, you're gonna <laughs> yeah. have to take an nd out right around the world so <laughs> yeah yeah so think a little about your business then yeah how's it look and what's what does the future look like if you took investment are you are you yeah yeah 
We we are on a we've just received some money from North Star Ventures. Okay. We're yeah. part of the six month Asian accelerator program, which awesome. has been planned for and that was a vigorous process to get on that. There was, was thirty five companies applied and they took eight businesses, so we're yeah, one of those. Did you have to go and do a pitch or just yeah, put yeah. a big sort of presentation together or both? We had to <laughs> do a, um, a a business plan. We had to send in a, a, a pitch deck and then we had yep. to go and do a pitch in the executive box in St James's Park. Right. In front of a panel of the head of EIT Health, the director for Super Network, and the director for North Star Ventures. Okay. So we had to stand up and pitch, do a 10 minute presentation. And when did he find out? Uh, the next day. Did you? And at the same time, we were getting with 3D model from CPI. So in right. all in that day, it was yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty much. What was the feedback then? Um, really good. We just yeah. need to validate our product okay. and with proof of concept. So we're just working on that now. So we've created a five year plan. Excellent. And we are sort of like know where we want to be in five years basically to become a medical device is what we want to that's the long term goal yeah but this we're now writing our angel investment pitch which should be ready by the end of June okay and we've looked at the project and it's probably around about the 300k mark okay so in, in terms of bringing that investment in do you need someone someone in terms of resource or a mentor to come in as well and guide you yeah. through things so we've yeah. got a company on board that are going to mentor us through that process awesome and um, we've got myself and Raphael and we've also got another lady on the team who's done a PhD in sensory based technology yeah, yeah. Worked for Procter and Gamble so she's uh, okay pretty, pretty cool good. Um, what about a commercial person or a, a, a business sort of mentor? Um, we've got the program, mentorship. Right. So we've got six months. We get coaching once a month on there. Brilliant. Validation of where we're at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that runs out in October. Okay. And we've got these guys at Proto we can bounce off. Mm. In terms of somebody really hard as a consultant in the business, we've identified one guy and once we start generating some revenue and pay for that as a, as a service we're gonna we've looked at that area as well so yeah so we're literally it, it's the last this week is validated we first year plan already fantastic so it was you know when you have one of their moments of yeah. a couple of days and to say oh yeah we are on track yeah and it's nice to know that because it doesn't happen every day because you think you're just in the core face and you never yeah. really get to see what's happening yeah. so well i mean circling right back to the st start of conversation when you are immersed, when you are on the hamster wheel and the coal face, I think you just mentioned earlier about just stepping back, being more mindful, you know, leaving the device alone, letting creativity take its course. Yeah. You're right, sometimes you do need that space yeah. to be to let it, let it kind of sit and resonate. Yeah. Yeah. Let it soak in a bit. Yeah, 100%, 100%. It's funny because quite often what I've thought about is sometimes I've been exposed to an idea, but I haven't thought too much about it. Mm -hmm. I've just let my mind subliminally think about it. Yeah. You know, whilst I go for a run or even a holiday. And it's just, it's sitting thinking away when you don't actually know. I, yeah. lo I love that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you've got to allow thoughts to come and go. I totally agree. And probably not hold on to too much. Totally Everything's agree. a circuit, like I mentioned before. Yeah. It's a cycle. So we have an idea and where does it go? And we've got to close that at some point, otherwise it just stays open. Yeah. And that's a little bit like if you're a little bit frustrated about something, how, if you pay attention to being frustrated, you give it the energy it needs mm. to grow bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. At some stage, you have to just either let go of it or just close it off and what's it really doing for me and, and don't get too caught up in mind, <laughs> which yeah. is what I'm learning, you know, because yeah. we're, we're not mind, we're, yeah. we're being, you know. Hey, it's so. easier said than done, though, because we are beings and we do have a mind and we do think that way, but yeah. you just have to accept it, let it wash over you, you know. It's thank, hard. Thank right? yourself yeah, for yeah. them thoughts, but then move them along. Yeah, be grateful, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gratitude's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So. Yeah. Well, listen, John, thanks so much for sharing your journey. It's been interesting. And I'm really glad I grabbed you because I think you've had a different take yeah. from today that yeah. we've had it very much tech and products I think you're coming out from another angle so I wish you the best yeah I did <laughs> thank you it, it, well the tech side drives me nuts I'm going to clue <laughs> about it <laughs> and then I think you are if you surround yourself with people that know that yeah. you just watch your part in it perfect that's, that's it you know, yeah, yeah. just know your part in whatever you're creating exactly yeah you surround yourself with good everything. people exactly yeah, yeah. And, the, and obviously your, your colleagues have surrounded themselves with good people and that's why you're on the oh, jigsaw yeah. you know so. I hope so yeah, yeah, yeah good stuff man. Right. Thanks, Excellent. Right. Thanks. thank you Cheers. appreciate that good man cheers Okay, everybody, uh, the final um, session of the day um, is a lightning pitch. And the lightning pitch is one minute pitch where these three guys will get to put their company up front and uh, try and win um, 
well, as I spoke about before, the co-working co co desk for six months and a day's consultancy from me for six months. And you don't. And a pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's all in the feet. And, um, as you're giving away the socks, I'll let you host this. Well, then this me and. Got some sort of <laughs> he's not getting any more. No. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, <laughs> Mr. Farah. Over to me. Well, thanks, Jeremy. You've just said everything. Okay, we've got three people in the pitch. Um, should we start this way? What I'd like you to do is tell us who you are, where you're from. I'm going to time you the minute. Okay, pitch us, and then we'll have a minute worth of questions. If anyone's got any questions for you. Does that sound okay? Okay, yeah. Okay. Hold on. So I'm Kamal Hassan, and I'm from Pakistan. Um, so the business I'm working on is called Hintbot. Um, so currently, it's much easier for a user to delete your app than to provide you with feedback. At Hintbot, we're trying to change that. We provide you with a plugin that removes all obstacles from a user wanting to give feedback to your business actually getting it. The plugin is that easy to use. Um, it goes directly inside your app. Um, it, this provides you with feedback faster in larger quantities and of higher quality than compared to other methods such as surveys or questionnaires. So our mission at Hempot is to uh, make your customers love your brand. Um, with engaging your customers and listening to them, you not only improve your product, but you also are able to build a community of loyal users. So if any of you are interested in Hempot, um, I'd love to have a chat with you afterwards. Had you practiced that? Because that's 58 seconds. Oh. A couple wow, of times, Wow, yeah. check him <laughs> out. Wow. So listen, there's some very bold statements in there, wasn't there? Yeah. Do you have any questions? How does it work? So it's basically just a plugin that uh, people can put into their apps with just like two lines of code. And then the user is just sh uh, shown a button when they click on it. It seamlessly comes right inside your app. And you can also customize it so it looks exactly like your app, so it doesn't feel as if they are moved to somewhere else. Yeah. Two lines of code, I could have wrote that. Anybody <laughs> else? <laughs> Who's the competition? Um, not a lot of competition because uh, mobile uh, app space is just starting out now. But um, one of them is called Instabug, but they mostly focus on bug reporting and that type of stuff. And we're more focused on uh, product uh, suggestions and feedback. Quickly, one last question. How do people choose people go between chat, chat and, and, and your? Um, so yeah, currently one of the features we're offering is suggestions, but yeah, eventually we do want to offer a suite of products, so chat will probably be one of them, but it'll be a separate button so they can easily differentiate between them. And uh, the aim is to like have a community of users so you can see the suggestion that you're thinking of or the problem that you have and then someone else might have already answered. So you don't have to contact and wait for some customer service. You can easily look at the answer over there and get your problem solved. Excellent stuff. There's your minute of questions. Well done. That sounds good. Thank you. I love it. I'll have one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could you tell us who you are, where you're from? I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of a prompt, okay? <laughs> When you uh, ask a question, keep it nice and short, because I'll have to re um, reset it into this mic so people can hear. Go. So I'm Tom. Uh, I'm here with Sintel, my business partner. Uh, we're already based in Proto. We're an emerging tech company and content creation and consultancy firm. Um, we are looking to hopefully, with this, do a bit more than just have a, a desk necessarily. Uh, we're chatting about some potential other options, but let's put it this way. Try and be a bit humanitarian with it. We know there's lots of people who could use this, and even if not, uh, we've also got part of our network that could tap into it. Um, we spend most of our time as consultants trying to make sure that the teams we bring together around projects are the best they can be. If we had a home and somewhere to put them when they're here. We already have plenty of room in the office, but we could always do with more. And if it wasn't for us, that space would, as far as we're concerned, become a community space that is paid for. So uh, something where any one of the guys that's here could just come and get that. Um, yeah, not much more to say, really. We'd, we're kind of all right. Like, uh, But there's other people who could benefit. So, you know, if you trust our judgment, don't. But if you do, uh, we could give it to someone really good. Yeah. And breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions? How exactly would you spread the love? How exactly would you spread the love? Okay. I am on camera. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, there's a few ideas, stuff where we just, unfortunately we came up with this today, so um, we'd have to have a chat about things, but at the moment we try and spread the love as much as we can. I mean, I'm literally talking to the guy who knows this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Cameron, uh, the way that we at Sintel like to spread the love uh, is uh, myself and my business partner, he doesn't do it much, but um, we like to go and find really interesting people to like uh, bring into the fold, show them what we do, inspire them, uh, and then just hide them from all the mad crack with uh, the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's your minute over. Yeah, good. If you wouldn't mind passing it across. Chris, two mi- whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Remember who you are, where you're from. Remember who I am. It's a bit long day. Do okay, you it's remember? Been long day. <laughs> Do you know what year it is? Yeah, okay, yeah. you're in. Uh, my name's Christian Barlow. I'm the director of Synergy VR. Uh, we virtually do anything VR, AR, which is virtual reality, augmented reality. What we do uh, for our clients is we deliver a return on experience and a return on investment. And what we do is help uh, marketing companies, small to medium enterprises to large enterprises to reach out to a wider audience and connect, inspire, educate and inform their clientele. We do this in a number of ways through the power of 360, 3D tours, um, um, digital brochures and maximizing that with augmented reality and live chat. We integrate that for one reason only, and that is to save costs, time, and resources, and to deliver a much higher return on your investment. And there we go. You can tell he's in sales, can't you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. Everything was in there. Yeah. I'm definitely having one of those. Any questions for Christian? Oh, yeah. Do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> No questions. Can you just think, do you think of a random question? Mixed, mixed reality? <laughs> yeah, my time here is done. <laughs> well, virtual reality is putting, virtual reality is putting, oh sorry, virtual reality is putting something into a, uh, into a space so they're familiarizing. So we work in 360 um, and 360 is not virtual reality. It's putting someone into a 360 experience so they can fully uh, view their whole experience around them. Um, augmented reality, well, that's very, very different. And we don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> How about we do? Carry on. <laughs> panic. No, no, Sheer no. panic. I'm a sales guy, not a techie. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then what we need to do, then we need to pick a winner, okay? So we've got our sales guy at the end here. We've got a chap with the bold statements and we've got the guy who's going to be spreading the love. Okay, so should we have a round of applause? Uh, yeah, will, that, will that gauge it, yeah? yeah? So a round of applause for the love spreader. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> a round of applause for the guy with the bold statements. <laughs> and the number one sales guy in the Northeast. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I'm gonna hover my hand over and tell me who won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's terrible. You've already got socks, you're not getting it right, okay. <laughs> My friend, would you like to come and... Uh... Well, actually, I was thinking perhaps Rachel would like to do that, but um, I will hand the socks to the winner, who no, no, is... No, 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 the winner already has socks. <laughs> oh, right. The winner has socks. No, it has to be him. What do you think? I think my one. No, my one. Yeah, yeah. Do you Kamal. think he won? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kamal did. Well done. Hey. Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> and with that, um, yeah, just a few words about the safari. It's been a really interesting week, and I've met a lot of new people through setting up this safari in Newcastle and Gateshead. Um, all of them really great people, actually. I can't lie. And... Um, very, very happy that um, that we've had um, such decent attendance and great people to um, represent at the safari. And I can only thank them. So a round of applause for everybody who's took part. <laughs> and of course, the, the North East's number one uh, podcaster. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, where is he? <laughs> thank you very much. And a round of applause for Richard. Three days of absolute inspiration. Well done. <laughs> Don't forget that we're in Cool Yard. Scream for pizza tonight. What nice. time? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an hour. Give us an hour. Yeah, I'll be in there about ten minutes. <laughs> well done, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank Lee. You. Oh, and Lee, of course. Yes. The well, number Lee. one world streamer in the UK. 
<laughs> Not the world, obviously. There is better people out there. I like his little delay. It takes him five seconds to get my idea. Well, 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 well done, mate. Well yeah. done, mate. Yeah. Let's do it.